Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back and happy Wednesday, halfway there. Let's get into our today in history. April 22nd, 1970, Earth Day, an event to increase public awareness of the world's environmental problems, is celebrated in the United States for the first time. Millions of Americans, including students from thousands of colleges and universities, participated in rallies, marches, and educational programs. Alright, so if you guys didn't know, now you do. Today is Earth Day! Pretty exciting stuff. And actually the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which I think is even more exciting. Um, so get out there and enjoy the world a little bit. Enjoy nature. Maybe go for a walk. Maybe sit in your backyard. Maybe help your mom in the garden a little bit. Just get out there and appreciate the beauty that is around us right? and recognize how lucky we are to live in such a beautiful place. Um, okay, so let's get into information for today. Yesterday I assigned you guys this video, quick six minute video on the Little Rock Nine, um, where it told you a little bit about the impact there and what happened in Little Rock, Arkansas, following the Brown versus the Board of Education decision, right, if you remember Brown versus the Board, um, got rid of um, segregation in public schools, right? So we start to see integration happening, right? Integration opposite of segregation. When you segregate, you separate. So S and S. When you integrate, right, you bring together. So like inter, intertwine, integrate, okay? Um, and then you guys watch the video and then had this question here. It's based on the video and your prior knowledge. Assess the effecting, effectiveness of desegregation after the Brown v. Board decision. Be sure to use evidence from today's video on the Little Rock Nine. Um, so today in my office hours, I had a few questions asking me to clarify this a little bit. So I just wanted to do that here for those of you who maybe were confused but didn't get to stop by office hours. When I say assess the effect effectiveness of desegregation after Brown versus the board decision, what I mean is we know that the decision is made that segregation is no longer legal in public schools. Um, so I want to know is, does that effectively happen? So when they say that separate but equal is inherently unequal um, and that schools need to desegregate with all deliberate speed. How successful of a ruling is that? Does that happen? Does it go over smoothly? Does the uh, Supreme Court decisions play out the way it's, they want it to? Right? Yes or no and then tell me why using evidence from both prior knowledge and what you saw in the video. Okay, um, and then just make sure that you're only talking about this time frame and the time immediately after Brown versus the board. Don't go into like long term impact um, in terms of like today because obviously we know schools are integrated. I want to know immediately after how effective is that ruling. Okay. All right. Um, so moving forward. Brown versus the Board of Education is going to be the first legal step forward where we see the government stepping in and saying, no, segregation is not allowable and we need to make sure that these changes are being made. Right? African Americans have had legal rights through the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments at this point in time for over 100 years. Um, so now we see the law and government is trying to catch up with that ruling and trying to close those loopholes that were created or found by Southern government and make things more equal. So um, your aim for today is what changes during the 1900s contributed to the civil rights movement? So we're going to look at specifically changes in government, right? Because in order for people to take these changes seriously, right? It's one thing for the government to say, oh, integration needs to happen, segregation is wrong, African Americans need to be treated equally. But if we aren't seeing those changes take place in our leadership, in our government, it's not setting a great example for the rest of the United States. So we want to see changes happening within government because then the hope is that it will trickle down, right? And if you're putting African Americans in positions of power in government, then you're allowing them that stage to really right, have a voice and enact change. So that's going to be incredibly important to see African Americans um, getting a voice in government. Right? Not only in voting, but actually in the decision making and the law making processes. So, what I have here is a graphic organizer for you, uh, and you have to do two things. Right? So it says directions, analyze each, sor each source, and for each source, 
one, identify the branch of government for each source, and then two, identify the differences for each branch by categorizing them into the right time period. Okay. So, you are going to have three different sources. Each source is going to represent a branch of government. And just as a reminder, the three branches of government are judicial, legislative, and executive. All right? Just so you remember. Right? Um, and then you need to, in each source, look at what is happening in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and then what happens in the later 1900s, right? So how were things almost immediately following Reconstruction and then now that we're into the Civil Rights Movement, right? What are the changes that we see happening and how have things evolved over time, right? So this is a two-fold answer. How were things here and then how have they changed, okay? Um, so hopefully that's pretty straightforward. Right? Again, three sources, one for each branch of government. Right? And then um, down at the very end, I just provide you with some additional information, things that um, the social studies department as a whole thought were pretty interesting and that you guys should know a little bit about in terms of KKK members who were also in positions of power in the government. Right? So I think from reading this, it gives you a little bit more insight on why the government allowed state level governments to get away with these loopholes or get away with avoiding actually enacting change and actually giving African Americans the rights that they deserved, right? Because if you have these people who obviously at their core are against segre sorry are against integration there's no way that they're going to be enforcing laws that outlaw segregation right so just some interesting information there um stuff that really goes if you guys look into the more recent history right 2010 is one of the more recent years that you have here so it's pretty interesting all right um so that is everything. Uh, just make sure that you guys also do the flip grid. Um, and I think that should be everything. All right. Uh, I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. And of course, as always, stay safe and make good choices. Bye, guys.